Welcome. Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Davis. My name is Lori Warren and I will be your worship associate today. For thousands of years, the land on upon which we are gathered has been the home of the Putwin people, inclu including the Yochadihi Wintun Nation today. The Putwin people have remained committed to the stewardship of this land over many centuries. It has been cherished and protected as elders have instructed the young through generations. We are honored and grateful to be gathered here today on their traditional lands. If this is your first time here in person, we welcome you. We hope you will stop by the welcome table so that we can get to know you and get connected. For our online community, if this is your first time here or you're not yet connected to our newsletter, please, please look for a message from our online welcome host or send a message to the person with welcome in their name. We come together in many ways this morning. Let us take a moment to connect to our online congregation. <laughs> hey, everybody. In whatever way you are joining us this morning, please leave the door open behind you, inviting others to enter too. Our service today is being led by guest minister, Reverend Kevin Allen Mann. Red Ke Rev Kev, who uses he, him, Sha pronouns, was ordained by the First Unitarian Church of Oakland on October 1st, 2023, the first day of both Philippine American and LGBTQ history months. He serves as chaplain at Sequoia Hospice, as a faculty advisor at the Star King School for the Ministry, and as a consultant for partnership with UU Church of the Philippines. Rev Kev founded diverse revolutionary UU multicultural ministries, Drum Bay Area, whose vision is to cultivate rotating quarterly retreats for black indigenous people of color by POC UUs. Welcome, Reverend Kevin. We light our sacred chalice this morning as well as our candles of joys, holding our joys and our concerns, holding our concerns. And our chalice lighting words are from Reverend Richard Gilbert, titled, We Bid You Welcome. We bid you welcome, who come with weary spirit seeking rest. Who come with troubles that are too much with you, who come hurt and afraid. We bid you welcome, who come with hope in your heart. Who come with anticipation in your step, who come proud and joyous. We bid you welcome, who are seekers of a new faith who come to probe and explore, who come to learn. We bid you welcome, who enter into this hall as a homecoming. Who have found here room for your spirit, who find in this people a family. Whoever you are, whatever you are, wherever we, you are on this journey, we, we bid, bid you welcome. welcome. And now we have our opening hymn, number 121, We'll Build a Land. And in the chorus of number 121, we have a slight change to be more inclusive. We're gonna be singing, Come Build a Land Where All Are Relations. 
instead of sisters and brothers as in the original lyrics. And so please um, join in body and spirit as we sing number 121, We'll Build a Land. <laughs> Please rise in body and spirit if you are willing and able. Thank you, church. We now enter into a time of prayer. Will you center your body, center your mind, feel your feet on the floor, your back resting on its chair? Center into this moment, here and now. This breath, we bid you welcome as we work towards our vision of an anti-racist, anti-oppressive, multicultural, multi-religious, unitarian universalism where everyone is welcome, where everyone is free. As we gather this morning with disturbing news of Trump's assassination attempt, I know of no other better place to be in times of crisis in times when it gets hard, I know no other better place to be than here, 
with our fellow Unitarian Universalists, where in times of crisis, we can find our center. In times of crisis, we can restore our faith in humanity and be held by a covenantal community with love at the center. Most importantly, it is here in our liberal religious sanctuaries that I remember I am not alone in my grief, in my rage, in my sorrow. I am not alone in my quest for collective liberation. Remind us, spirit of this flaming chalice, that we have a life-saving message in our liberal religious identity. May our Unitarian Universalist communities be a safe harbor in this storm of interlocking oppressions. May we be a safe haven for our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer communities. May we be a sanctuary from the sins of white supremacy culture, from settler colonialism, and a refuge from both Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. With our new UUA Article II purposes as our guide, may the light of justice always be our sacred flame. May the peace of equity bring the collective liberation we seek. May we be willing to cultivate transformation in ourselves, in our congregations, and in the world at large. May our interdependence hold us close to that web of life of which we are a part. May generosity flow like water, leaving any thoughts of scarcity behind. May pluralism ground us in the core essence of who we are as a faith tradition. Pluralism. Many windows, one light, Many waters, one sea, all lifted hearts are free. May love, at the center of our faith, remind us that we are enough. We are worthy. Our living tradition tells us that revelation is not sealed and our liberation is bound to one another. There is no other way. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are on your journey of faith, there is a love holding us, holding all we love. We rest in this love. Amen and blessed be. And now Lori is going to join us for a very exciting Article 2 responsive reading. So as you may or may not know, um, at the end of June, um, over 700 congregations met at the Unitarian Universalist General Assembly virtually online this year and passed the first time since 1987 new purposes and principles for our 1,000 Unitarian Universalist congregations. So I'm very excited because Lori and I are gonna walk the congregation through the exact text that was passed. So this is the exact wording now of our new principles and purposes of the Unitarian Universalist Association. When the part says all, please read the all. Yeah, together with us. And that's how we start here. Off of, oh? Yes. So. Article two, as Unitarian Universalist, we covenant congregation to congregation and through our association to support and assist one another in our ministries. We draw from heritages of freedom, reason, hope, and courage, building on the foundation of love. Love is the power that holds us together and is the Interdependence. 
We honor the interdependent web of all existence. With reverence for the great web of life and with humility, we acknowledge our place in it. We to protect Earth and all we will create and nurture sustainable relationships of care and respect, mutual justice. We will work to prepare our arm and have the hands of the relationships. Pluralism. We celebrate that we are all sacred beings, diverse in culture, experience, and theology. We are meant to learn Justice. We work to be diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where all thrive. We are meant to dismantle racism and all forms of systemic oppression. We support the use of inclusive and democratic processes to make decisions within our congregations, our association, and society. Transformation. We adapt to a changing world. We covenant to collectively transform the world spiritually and ethically. All events of change must have a mental or a unitary and universal heritage. Never complete and never perfect. Generosity. We cultivate a spirit of gratitude and hope. We covenant to freely and compassionately share our faith, presence, and resources. Our generosity connects us to one another in relationships of independence and mutuality. Equity. We declare that every person has the right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness. We covenant to use our time, wisdom, attention, and money to build and sustain fully really successful and inclusive communities. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, congregation. Let's take a few moments to breathe those words in. Imagine thousands of congregations across the United States and around the world are committing to this. This is who we are. This is who we are in this day, in this hour. So good morning, Unitarian Universalist Church of Davis. Good morning. Good morning. It is such an honor to be here with you all today. I um, have to thank my partner, Noah, my mom, Edna, and my father, Alan. My parents live in Sacramento, so we spent the night with them. My partner and I live in Oakland, made the drive this morning a lot easier, so uh, glad to have them with me. It is such an honor to be here preaching for my first time at your beloved congregation. Thank you to your interim minister, Reverend Connie Simon, for extending this invitation to preach. Thank you to worship associate Lori and to our music uh, person as well and to the tech team and all the volunteers that make Sunday morning service happen here every single Sunday. This morning, the words of late black civil rights icon, John Lewis, whisper in my ear, do not get lost in a sea of despair. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year. Our struggle is the struggle of a lifetime. Never ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble. <laughs> Necessary trouble. John Lewis's call to get in good trouble reminds me of the best that we can be as Unitarian Universalists as we struggle to bend the arc towards justice, strive to dismantle white supremacy, and forge transformative solidarity with all oppressed people yearning to be free. 
Being a Unitarian Universalist means being part of something bigger than oneself. It means being part of a living tradition that calls each of us to our best and brightest selves. Being a member of this church means doing the hard internal work and external work to challenge oppression in all its forms within, among, and beyond our church walls. I see so much hope and optimism for our faith in the recent passage of our Article 2 UUA bylaws, which is the covenant to which all our congregations pledge themselves when they become a member of the Unitarian Universalist Association. So why change our beloved seven principles and six sources now? According to the UUA's executive vice president, Carrie McDonald, the last time there was a wholesale revision to Article 2 took place in 1987. The world was a very different place in 1987, and so much has changed both in our society and in large. Speaking about the recent passage of Article 2, our president of the association, the first queer woman of color president of the Unitarian Universalist Association, Reverend Dr. Sophia Betancourt said this, now is a historic moment for Unitarian Universalism as we move our living tradition forward to focus on our shared values that promote liberation, radical inclusion, and communal care both within our church and across society. Our new UUA Article II purposes guide us into that future with the popularly trending UU acronym of JetPig. Have y'all heard about <laughs> JetPig? Not yet. All right, so JetPig stands for justice, equity, transformation, pluralism, equity, and generosity. Justice, oh sorry, justice, equity, transformation, pluralism, interdependence, generosity, jet pig. So um, across, you know, there's, <laughs> especially the religious education folks have little stuffed, you know, pigs with little eye things and wings and, and hats. And some people love jet pig, some people hate jet pig. There's controversy. I like it because for the past 20 years, it's been hard for me to say our seven principles, honestly, as an ordained minister, but jet pig, justice, Equity, transformation, pluralism, interdependence, generosity, with love at the center. So the world is really hungry. It's hungry for post-pandemic spaces of meaning, of vulnerability, of trust. And Unitarian Universalist faith has always been rooted with love at its center. When I came out of the closet, at six, 17 years old, the Filipino Catholic faith of my youth could no longer serve me. I remember my mother bringing me to our local Catholic priest for his advice on me coming out of the closet at 17 years old. I'll never forget what that Catholic priest said to me that day. He said, love the sinner hate the sin. Kevin, Jesus loves you for being gay, he said. You can just never act on it. That's what the Catholic priest of my youth told me, never act on it. That was his advice to a 17-year-old, young, queer, Filipino-American trying to come out of the closet. Never act on it. I left the Catholic Church that day, unwilling to be part of a religion that was damaging to my LGBTQ soul. My love is not a sin, I wanted to tell that Catholic priest. I began searching for something more, something that could ground me from the places of my values, something that said, yes, I am worthy. Yes, I am loved, I am sacred, my queer Filipinx American identity is worthy, is loved, is sacred. I needed a religious education like our whole lives that teaches our kids about LGBTQ bodies and reproductive rights. 
I needed a community who loved all of who I am, all my ancestors, all the spiritual traditions I carry. I yearned for a church whose theological diversity knew no limits. While we've done great work over the past 30 years around LGBTQ inclusivity and have earned nationally recognized track record of organizing faith communities for LGBTQ equality, while I'm incredibly proud of this progress, it hurts. It hurts to say that we are not in the same place when it comes to our work around racial and ethnic diversity, equity, and inclusion. Most of our churches do not reflect the multicultural communities that surround us. Too often, racial and class privilege hold us back from our dreams of beloved community. In his book, Mistakes and Miracles, Unitarian Universalist Congregations on the Road to Multiculturalism, UU Minister Reverend Nancy Palmer Jones and lay leader Karen Lynn write about this topic. In this book, Reverend Fred Muir talks about our faith struggle with white supremacy culture. Reverend Muir says, Unitarian Universalist worship is still stuck in an old white Protestant model. An intellectual sermon, European white dead man music, <laughs> and the choir singing. There's some folks that's all they want. They don't ever want to hear God. They never want to hear Jesus. They never want to hear scripture. They never want to hear anything else. They come from that you, you, humanistic point of view. And that's all they want to hear. However, many black indigenous people of color come to church seeking refuge and sanctuary in the midst of a white America drowning in the sins of racism. Settler colonialism and marginalization of the other, our UU value of interdependence means that everything is connected to everything else. Do our churches offer people of color refuge from the sins of racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, Islamophobia, and anti-Semitism? Do we have room for a God of justice rooted in the liberal tradition religions of people of color? For my immigrant Filipino American parents, our multi-ethnic Catholic church in Southern California was a place of vibrant multicultural religious community. The church was a critical safety net for new immigrant families that provided carpools for kids, daycare, culturally relevant pastoral counseling, and lifelong friendships my parents hold on to to this day. Philip, the, the church was also the one place where Filipino culture, Filipino dance, karaoke singing, delicious Filipino food was often celebrated and shared. There is a pain for people of color on the margins who convert to a liberal religious faith tradition struggling to overcome its own legacy of white supremacy culture. Queer black UU minister, Reverend Derek Jackson, speaks to this pain when he says, I was a universalist before I even knew there was a home for my beliefs. And yet I still go back to the spirit of the African Methodist Episcopal Church within which I was raised. I often ache for the music that makes my heart soar, that brings the divine into the room during worship. I miss ministry that is grounded in and speaks to my black identity. I miss a message of hope that is grounded in an understanding of struggle. I miss all these things. And yet, Reverend Jackson says, and yet theologically, I can be nowhere else than where I am. So I make my home here, in Unitarian Universalism, as imperfect as it is, and find ways to stay grounded, to stay connected, to stay whole. In our often humanistic, leaning UU communities, how can we be more inclusive and widen the circle to include more spiritual expressions that speak to people of color in religious languages that nurture and heals our souls? 
How do we draw from people of color, gods and goddesses, saints and rosaries, chants and spirituals? Would Our Lady of Guadalupe, so central to Latinx identity, be welcomed in our UU sanctuaries? Would our precious Santo Nino, the brown baby child Jesus, beloved by the Filipino people, be welcome in this church? Would Ganesh, the elephant-headed God and remover of obstacles, find safe space among us? When we sing black gospel music in our predominantly white churches, do we understand the legacies of slavery that these songs were born out of? As we forge solidarity among our diversity, we must learn that the only way to survive is together. We must remember the words of indigenous Australian activist Lilia Watson that our liberation is bound to one another. This past year, black indigenous people of color, Unitarian Universalists have been gathering every quarter over this past year with Drum Bay Area. Drum is diverse, revolutionary, Unitarian, Universalist, multicultural ministries, and has been the people of color group for the UUA since it was founded in 1997. Drum is a front door for new people and a spiritual home that enriches our liberal tradition. Drum Bay Area is a regional drum affiliate organizing amongst Unitarian Universalists of color across Northern California. We're having our strategic planning summer retreat on Saturday, August 17th, in person at the First Unitarian Church of Oakland and online for folks from Davis that may want to join us online. Uh, I'm very excited for your new minister, Reverend Angeline Jackson, who you called and begins here in just a few weeks. We are already have the foundations to build a vibrant and active people of color Unitarian Universalist network here in the Bay Area, but also in the Central Valley. Reverend Sanjay Hawk is a minister of color starting at the Auburn Church this fall as well with Reverend Sanjay Hawk in Auburn and Jack, Reverend Jack Angeline here, and Bay Area Drum also helped start a people of color group meeting twice a month at the Sacramento UU Church. So because of the organizing we've done in the Bay Area, the Sacramento UU Society now has a people of color group that meets at their church twice a month. Especially now, our country and the world need a strong liberal religious voice at the table. Yolo County needs a strong liberal religious voice at the table where all are worthy, where all are loved, where justice flows down like water, where collective liberation heals us from our interlocking oppressions, where we get ready for the many struggles ahead. The post-pandemic world is hungry for liberating spiritual communities that can meet people where they are. If we listen deeply to each other's stories, we can learn to co-create a new anti-racist, multicultural story of our living tradition. We can build upon the generations that came before. If we make this faith our own, we will reach the other side changed. For ourselves and for the future generations not yet born, we will win our collective liberation together. No one left behind, no one forgotten, no one oppressed. Amen and blessed be. Throughout the year, we share our offering plate with organizations nominated by members. 100% of the plate collected on the second and fourth Sundays goes to the recipient of the month. Recipient of the month in July is UU Justice Ministry of California, whose mission includes education, community organizing, and advocating for justice for all. Our faith justice campaigns are shaped by and rooted in your feedback 
and viewed through a lens that addresses racial justice, economic justice, disability rights, and disability rights. We are here to support you, our California UUs, and your journey toward justice in your local community. There are several ways you can contribute to our offering. You may give via the UUCD website by texting UUCD offering to 73256 or by check sent to UUCD with offering in the memo line. Those in the sanctuary with cash or check gifts are invited to place them in the basket. We thank you for your generosity. Thank you all. And I want to take a moment to just say thank you very much to Nancy Lauer for filling in and in a kind of a last minute emergency <laughs> this morning. So we extinguish our chalice by reading together these words by Elizabeth Seal Jones. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And our closing hymn is number 1017, Building a New Way. 
you please rise in body and spirit for our closing hymn lyrics will be on the slides <laughs> worship uh, with something exciting. If you would mind remaining standing just for a few moments longer, we close with the unity clap, which was used by the United Farm Workers, which began right here in California's Central Valley in 1965, when Filipino farm workers banded together with Latinx farm workers. And even though they couldn't speak the same language, they came from different cultures. They had different stories. They came together in the fields with the unity clap. It begins slow, like a heartbeat, and gradually builds up and up and up and ends with a isang bagsak, which means one down, one fall. If one of us falls, we all fall. When one of us rises, we all rise. So in the spirit of the unity clap,